you will be bringing your games to life using Construct2's event system. Construct2 doesn't require that you know how to code in any high-level programming language. Instead, Construct2 comes with a powerful block-based programming system, which was inspired by tools like Scratch. In Construct2's event system, you define one or more events. Events are a combination of conditions and actions. Conditions are logical tests. For example, whether something has taken place in the game. And actions are things that should occur in response to conditions being met. You place your events in what are called event sheets. You can organize your events into groups and even add comments that help you document your code. As with all programming, the sequence or order of your events and actions are important. In other words, just remember that events and actions that are listed first are executed first. There are different types of events in Construct2. There is a special event type called a trigger that is particularly useful. Triggers execute actions in response to the user doing something, like clicking the mouse or hitting a key on the keyboard. When it comes to triggers, there is often a particular user interaction that triggers the actions to be executed. There isn't a particular condition or conditions per se. You can spot triggers easily because they have a little green arrow to the left of the event. So here is how it all works. Video games are kind of like movies. They draw frames to the user's screen in order to simulate movement. Games are different, however, in that they are interactive. They must do more than simply render frames to the screen. There is additional code and user interactions that must be considered. To account for this, most game engines, including Construct2, have what is called a game loop. A game loop is an infinite loop which constantly runs code and generates frames to the user's screen as long as the game is being played. Each time, or iteration, through the loop is called a tick. With every tick, Construct2 follows the same general process of running qualifying events and actions and then drawing a frame to the user's screen. This process happens roughly 60 times per second, but is heavily dependent upon the processing power of the device the game is being played upon. Let's talk about the Construct2 event system. When it's time to code your game, you're going to be creating one or more events. Your events are placed within something called event sheets. Every layout in your game will have an associated event sheet. In my case, I'm looking at my demo layout, and it says here in the properties that this layout has the demo event sheet as its associated event sheet. If I open up that event sheet, I will see right now I have one event. Events are the things that are combinations of conditions and actions and there's different types of events in Construct2. This particular event is called a trigger. You can tell it's a trigger because it has a green arrow in the left margin. A trigger is exactly what it sounds like. Something triggers this event to um, take place, either an interaction with the user or something that happens in the game that's important. If this trigger happens, for example, if the player collides with any object type in the enemy's family, then the actions are executed in sequence from top to bottom. It's important to remember that the events that you place within your event sheets happen, are executed, are run from top to bottom, so order really matters. One thing to keep in mind, although every layout has its own event sheet, you can share event sheets by including them. For example, in my game, I have a, what's called a player event sheet. It has all of my code for my player, how to move it, and then what the goal is. This is code that I want multiple layouts to share. So what I can do in my demo event sheet, I can right click and I can include this event sheet. What this will do, it will bring in all the code that I wrote for the player event sheet and automatically include it in my demo event sheet. So that when the layout runs, it will automatically pull in all the events from this independent event sheet. Once again, right click, include event sheet, and at the very top of your event sheet, it'll let you know which shared event sheets you have brought in to your layout specific event sheet. Now, what happens in Construct2 is what happens in most game engines. Every single tick Every single time through this special game loop, it will try to execute all of the code in the event sheets. 
and then it will draw a frame. The frame will be drawn to your screen and then that process continues over and over and over again as long as you're playing the game. So I want to kind of demonstrate this for you. I want to prove to you that this is constantly happening. So let's go back to our demo layout. I have a little grass platform right here. I'm going to prove that your events are being run constantly, every tick, as fast as the computer can do it, by creating an event. Let's create our first event by clicking Add Event. You can choose any of the object types in your game, or you can choose a special object type called System. I'm going to use System. And then I'm going to find the special every tick event. Every tick, I'm going to move my grass platform up the layout just to prove to you that this is how the game loop works. I'm going to find grass platform and I am going to set its position manually. There's all kinds of actions associated with your object types. Grass platform dot x and then every single time I'm going to subtract 10 pixels every single time the event sheet is executed every tick I want to prove to you that I can move the grass platform up and that this will this action will be constantly executed over and over and over again so I'm gonna go ahead and run this notice how the platform flew off the screen because for every tick of the game loop I was subtracting 10, which pulls it further and further vertical. Another way I can prove to you that events are evaluated and run every single tick is to go into our debug mode. If you go down below and you choose system, you will see it'll tell you how many frames per second will even tell you how many ticks have occurred. It's really important to stay organized. One of the things that Construct2 gives you to do that are called event groups. So you can right click and add a group and you can say, um, let's say we'll call it danger. And events that can harm the player. And then what you can do is you can take your events and you can nest them within the groups. This is a great way to organize your code. Another great piece of functionality Construct2 has is that you can actually make these groups enabled and disabled. If you put something in an event group, you can even in your code have it disabled and then enable it at key times in the game. So that's you know pretty cool. In addition to putting things in groups, it's great to be able to add comments to your code so that you remember why you did what you did, or if someone um, comes after you, they'll understand what you were thinking. So what you should be able to do is add a comment, and then you can explain what you did. Every tick move the So even if you didn't understand this particular condition action combination, this event, you could read the comment and it would be in layman's terms.